Praise the Lord. I welcome every one of us to the Bible, to the, order to say Bible study. I think I'll turn it to a Bible study. I welcome every one of you to the service today in Jesus' name. And I pray the Lord will manifest His power in your life. Freedom. I am free. You'll be totally free in Jesus' name. If the sun shall set you free, ye shall be free indeed. I am free. I am free indeed. May the Lord confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. Father, we do thank you today for bringing us together. Thank you for the service. Thank you for the protection you've given us. Thank you for the great future ahead of everyone. We're asking, oh Lord, whatever binds anyone, whatever chains anyone down, and whatever will not make us to have that glorious future you prepared for everyone, cut it off in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, you set everyone free, and every question of our hearts will be answered. Every problems of our lives will be resolved. And all bondages will be broken away in Jesus' name. Set your people free. That none of us will ever be in bondage anymore in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at the book of Ezra. And I'm reading chapter 1, verse 1, the book of Ezra, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. Underline that, that the word of the Lord might be fulfilled. The word of the Lord being fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? Is God be with him? The Lord be with you. And let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem, and whosoever remains in any place where he sojourneth. Let the man of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts. That is, uh, beasts of uh, movement uh, to carry them. It says, uh, beside the free will offering for the house of, the, of God that is in Jerusalem. Verse 5, then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites with all them, note this one, mark this one, all them whose spirit God addressed, whose spirit God addressed, that is, God touched their spirit, he stirred their spirits also, he moved them to go up to build the house of the Lord, which is at Jerusalem. What we're reading about is the deliverance and the restoration of the children of Judah, the people of Judah, out of the Babylonian captivity. But you know something happened? The Lord had foreseen all that before it ever took place, even before the captivity. Many, many years before the captivity, Isaiah had seen the revelation and he had reached down that vision and eventually they went into captivity. 
Why? Because of their sin. You must have learned, you must have known from the writing of Jeremiah that they were in the captivity for 70 years. Why 70? Why captivity? Actually, the background is this. The children of Israel had been told that they will do their farming and they will reap their crops every year for seven, for six years. And then the seventh year, the land will rest. There'll be no work there. There'll be no cultivation there. But they'll give the land rest. But you know what they did? They did not observe the word of God. Somebody is asking, why did they go into captivity? These were the people of God. Have you seen they went into captivity? Seven years, they just kept on walking. Seven years, kept on walking. Seven years, kept on walking. And they should have given one year out of the seven unto God and allowed the land to rest. They went on like that for 490 years. 490 years and so God said all right I told you to give voluntarily and give cheerfully and give with all your heart one year out of seven one over seven now 490 years you didn't observe my word and 490 divided by seven is 70 so that the land will rest it was a form of punishment it was a form of discipline. It was a form that God will still have his way. God will have his way. You either give that way to him voluntarily, or you give that way to him compulsorily. And that's why they were in captivity. But now, 70 years had passed, and they were coming back. We're coming back. Somebody there said, we're coming back restoration he wanted to give them restoration but I, I need to tell you something come back to Ezra chapter 1 and I'm reading from verse 1 now in the first year of Cyrus king of Persia that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus. Underline that word, stirred. Stirred. He quickened him. He jolted him. He pinched him. He touched him. He aroused him. He touched his heart and he aroused his spirit. He stirred his spirit. Even though the prophecy was there, even though the declaration was there, even though the man had been marked down, that he will be the one to bring restoration, the stirring of the spirit, very important, the stirring of the spirit, you will not move. You will not do anything. You will not make progress except there is a stirring in your spirit. Calvary has accomplished everything. Christ has accomplished everything. The promises of Christ and of God are yea and amen. And God is a faithful God, but there is no fulfillment and there is a stirring in your spirit. And you say, I'm getting out of this place. I'm moving out of this Babylon. There is a stirring in the spirit. Come to verse 5. It says in verse 5, Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites with all them whose spirit God raised. Saying the same thing. The people, after God started the spirit of Cyrus, he made the proclamation. The people themselves that heard, they had their spirits turned up. You know, there are people, they are relaxed. There are people, even though the gates are opened, even though the promises are given, even though revival is coming, even though restoration has come, even though it's a time of revival, even though it's a time of outpouring of the power of God from heaven, even though it is the time of total, plentiful, abundant things from the Lord, they're not stirred. 
They just remain like that. And because they remain like that, nothing happens. Every good thing that happens in your life comes as the Lord stirs of your spirit and you respond to that stirring. Let me just show you in Exodus chapter 36. Exodus chapter 36. And I'm reading to you from verse 2. Exodus chapter 36 verse 2 and Moses called Bazaliel and Aholiab Aholiab and every wise hearted man in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom even everyone whose heart stirred him up the wisdom is there the ability is there the possibilities are there but the heart was stirred up Every man who sat stirred him up to come unto the work to do it. Your spirit has to, to be stirred up. Look at Job. I'm reading from verse chapter 17. Job chapter 17. There are good things ahead of you. There are wonderful things ahead of you. And this year for you by the grace of God and the promise of God is going to be a great year. The greatest year you ever lived in your life doors will open for you release will come to you but you see while the doors are open and while the release is there your spirit must be stirred job chapter 17 i'm reading from verse 8 upright men shall be astonished at this and the innocent shall stir up himself the innocent shall stir up himself against the hypocrite a, a hypocrite comes and he wants to take your place and then you say what will be will be let God have his way if that is the way the wrong situation around here and these people are hypocrites and everybody should have known they're hypocrites and they're trying to take my place all right if they want to take my place let them take my place if they want to take my property let them take my property if they even want to take my husband let them take my husband let them take my wife let them take my children I'm just going to see what God will do you must stop yourself and you must understand this is my time and this is my opportunity the innocent will stir up himself you'll be stirred up i said you'll be stirred up everything that belongs to you will come to you but you will rise up and take it you will rise up and take it i rise up i'm going to take it i'm going to take it from the time of John the Baptist until now, it says the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent they take each by force. Even Ahab of all people said, don't you know that Ramos Gilead belongs to us? Let us go and take it. Let us go and take it. Even the unbeliever, even the sinner, he stirred up and he said, that's mine. Nobody will take it from me. You stir up yourself. And as you stir up yourself, this year will be wonderful. Your path will clear. And your possession will increase. And all the goodness of God will flow into your life in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Haggai chapter 1, verse 14. Haggai chapter 1, and I'm reading here from verse 14. Haggai chapter 1, verse 14, and the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel. What is the mountain before Zerubbabel? It's crying, grace, grace, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Yes, God is going to do that. And God is going to clear every mountain out of your way. But your spirit must be stirred up. You must wake up. You must not be sleeping. You must understand that is mine. Every promise of the word of God this year, every promise is yours. The power of the Holy Ghost is yours this year. Everything God has in store for you, you must be stirred up. You cannot just remain dull 
and dormant and helpless and impotent, immovable, and you never move at all. You are just there. You'll not bulge. Uh -uh. It doesn't happen that way. It says, and the Lord stood up, the spirit of Zerubbabel. And then it goes on. It says, the son of Shaltiel, the governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua. He stood up the spirit of Joshua as well. The son of Joseph, Dek, uh, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people and they came and they did the work you're not going to do any work and you're not going to accomplish anything until your spirit is stirred up and you say i'm not going to be as i was last year i'm not going to be as i was in the past a future is before me and a great and glorious and wonderful future is before me i must be stirred up to do the work in the house of the lord of hosts there, God, I pray the Lord will do it. In my life, he'll do it. In my family, he will do it. And there is a stirring today. Look at this. I'm looking at uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 25 and verse 26. And uh, I'll read to verse 28. Look at this. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas preached and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners had them. And suddenly, that's how your miracle will come. And suddenly, that's how your breakthrough will come. And suddenly, that's how your release will come. Somebody help me shout the word suddenly. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaking. And immediately, and immediately, can you shout immediately? Yeah. All the doors were open. And tell me what follows there. Tell me, tell me, tell me. And everyone's bands were loosed. Everyone's bands were loose. Think about this condition now. The prison of the prison foundations, everything shaking, and all the doors were open, and the chains that bound everyone, everything loose. And the keeper of the of prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he threw, he drew out his sword, and he could have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled, but Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, tell me, for we are all here. The Spirit did not stir them up, and they did not stir up themselves. All the prison doors were opened, they were captives, and the chains were broken. All the things were taken away from them, released by action. By demonstration was given unto everyone, everyone without exception, but nobody's touch up himself to escape. And Paul told that Philippian jailer, Don't trouble yourself, we're all here. By the way, Paul and Silas were there for a purpose for the salvation of that man, but all the other people there. They were there because their spirit did not stir them up and God, they did not respond to the stirring of their spirit from God. Isaiah chapter 64. Isaiah chapter 64. I'm going to read from verse 4, then I'll go to verse 7. Isaiah chapter 64. Look at verse 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither have the eyes seen, O God, beside thee, what he has prepared, what he has prepared, what the Almighty, what the Great One, what the Holy One of Heaven, what the Most High had prepared for him that waited for him. He said, there's something glorious, there's something great, in fact, eyes have not seen this and the heart has never imagined this the great thing that god has provided for the people that wait on the lord look at verse 7 and there is none that calleth upon thy name that stirs up himself to take hold of thee great blessings available 
and great prospects available but there's no stirring there's no stirring up that's why the lord is saying this day if you're going to catch you will catch if you're going to receive i believe you'll receive if your bondage is going to be totally taken away forever and forever and i believe this is the day if there's going to be a release and i believe this is the day there must be a stirring in your heart you stir up yourself and you say i will not remain where i have always been i'm moving on i am moving on i said i am moving on and look at uh, second second timothy chapter one second timothy chapter one i'm reading from verse six second timothy chapter one i'm reading from verse six it says wherefore i put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of god which is in thee by the putting on of my hands it says timothy don't just sit down there he said, Timothy, don't be a coward. Timothy, don't be a laid, a laid back person. Timothy, don't be relaxing all the time. Wake up and stir up the gift that is in thee. Don't you know, Timothy? In verse 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Amen? And of love. A good amen. And of his sound mind, the final amen is giving us power, the spirit of power. He's giving us the spirit of love. He's giving us the spirit of his sound mind. And he says, Timothy, therefore, be different and be distinct and come up and get up and rise up. Stir up the gift of God that is in you. And if you'll do that, as the Lord is telling us in this word of God today, there's going to be a performance in your life. There's going to be a fulfillment in your life. It will be done in Jesus' name. I'm talking to you this morning on the perfect fulfillment of the word of the Lord. The perfect fulfillment of the word of the Lord. There's a fulfillment in your life. There's a performance in your life. God will do it. I said, God will do it. But you'll stir up yourself and you'll say, I'm not going to be laid back anymore. I am moving on. The perfect fulfillment of the word of the Lord. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the unchangeable prophecy of the word of the Lord. Prophecy already given and it's unchangeable. Heaven and earth may pass away, but this prophecy will never pass away. The unchangeable prophecy of the word of the Lord. Point number two, the unfailing promise of the word of the Lord. The unfailing promise of the word of the Lord. Point number three, the undeniable performance, the undeniable performance of the word of the Lord perform perform finalize perfected in your life it is going to happen even from this day it will happen in jesus name every yoke broken all the chains and the fetters everything snapped and taken away from your life the undeniable performance of the word of the lord come to number one what's your number one over there the unchangeable prophecy of the word of the Lord. We're coming back to Ezra chapter 1. Ezra chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 1. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord's church of the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing. You want to understand that that Cyrus, before he was born, about 160, 170 years, and some authority says two centuries, that means 200 years before he was born, Isaiah had made the proclamation and it was a prophecy and every prophecy of the word of God must be fulfilled and look at this in Isaiah chapter 44 the prophecy 
that's unchangeable the prophecy that is unalterable the prophecy that is irreplaceable must be fulfilled it says in isaiah chapter 44 i'm reading from verse 28 it says that says of cyrus he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure cyrus was not even born before you were born god knew you were coming to this world and he made he made preparation for you and he had something stipulated everything that happens everything that is going to happen if you will stir up yourself if you will take hold your life will be beautiful and look at this it says of cyrus he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure even saying to jerusalem thou shalt be built and to the temple thy found thy foundation shall be laid and i said he did not stop there he was talking about this man that had not been born he was talking about cyrus and even mentioned the name because the lord gave him the name and because the lord knew Cyrus was not going to be an accident. You are not an accident in the world. You came on purpose. God sent you here on purpose. And that purpose will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. When you were born again, God knew about it. And now when you were even brought to this church and you became part of this church, God knew about it. He has a plan. He has a purpose. He has a project. Concerning your life, it will be done. Look at chapter 45, verse 1. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to his chosen one, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have pulled in, and to subdue nations before him. And I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two lived gates, and the gates shall not be shut, and I will go before thee. And I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight i will break in pieces the gates of brass all the hindrances before you they are broken in jesus name and caught in sunder the bars of iron and then he says i will give you treasures of the of darkness the treasure you need to fulfill the plan of god and the purpose of god all that treasure will be fulfilled in jesus name they are granted I said you are granted. You are looking at the ladder you are going to climb and you are saying, where, it, where will the strength come from? It will be given to you. The finance, where will that come from? It will be given to you. All the treasures, even if it's coming from the people of the world that are amassing the treasure, and you didn't know they were amassing it for you, it will flow your direction in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. I'm reading from verse 8. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways says the lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts he says for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth thither and then it says but, but what and return not thither, but water it the earth and make it bring forth and board that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11 So shall my word be. The word for you today, so shall my word be. The proclamation of your life today, so shall my word be and the word of salvation and the word of sanctification and the word of power in the holy ghost you will not remain as powerless as you are now power will come upon your life so shall my word be and the word of healing and the word of deliverance and the word of authority don't look at the back and don't look at the past and don't say why is this why is this don't look at the 70 years behind you today is a day of proclamation and today is a day of fulfillment. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. 
but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the scene whereunto I sent it. And so God had said that the children of Judah, the people of Judah, they'll be there 70 years, and the Lord was marking the time. And Daniel also, he took that to the Lord in prayer, and the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus and said, it's time the captives are about to be released. It's time the captives are about to be released. I see the captivities are taken away today. Yokes are broken today. The word of the Lord will not return unto him void. It will accomplish that that the Almighty God has said, Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? The word of the Lord is coming to you as you are hearing the message. What seest thou about yourself? What seest thou about your family? What seest thou about your future? What seest thou about the empowerment the Lord is going to give you? What seest thou? And he said, I see a rod of an almond. In verse 12, then said the Lord unto me, thou as well see. I see clear today. I see well today. I see properly today. My eyes and my vision is sharp today. Is your vision sharp? 2020 vision, you will see well. You see the promises of God well. You see the power of God well. Thou hast well seen, I will hasten my word to perform it. I will hasten my word to perform it. Jeremiah chapter 44. Jeremiah chapter 44, the unchangeable prophecy of the word of the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 44, I'm reading from verse 28. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 28. Yet a small number that escaped the sword shall return out of the land of Egypt into the land of Judah. And all the remnant of Judah that had gone into the land of Egypt to sojourn there shall know whose word shall stand mine or theirs. The Lord is saying, we will know whose word will stand. The words of your enemy or the word of the Lord, which one will stand? The word of Babylon or the word of the Lord, which one will stand? The word of Satan or the word of the Lord, which one will stand? The word of your captors and the word of your op opposers and the word of the people that tie you down and the word of the Lord, which one will stand? The word of the false prophet that says you'll never come out of that or the word of the Lord, which one will stand? The word of the Lord will stand in your life. I said the word of the Lord will stand in your life. Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 12, Ezekiel chapter 12, I'm reading here from verse 28. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 28, Therefore say unto them, thus says the Lord God, there shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. No more delay. I said no more delay. The time of fulfillment has come. And the time of performance has come. It says, there shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. But the words which I have spoken shall be done, says the Lord God. It shall be done. In your life, it shall be done. For your joy, it shall be done. Abundance in your life, it shall be done. Peace in your life, it shall be done. And total, total, total deliverance, release, and revival, restoration, it shall be done in Jesus' name. 
Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 34 and verse 35. Matthew chapter 24, and we're looking at verse 34 and verse 35. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. My words shall not pass away. The prophecy, every prophecy of the word will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Number two, the unfailing promise of the word of the Lord. The unfailing promise of the word of the Lord. As you think about the people of Judah, the promise had been given that they were going to have a release after those 70 years. Look at Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29, I'm reading from verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace. There'll be peace in your heart. There'll be peace in your family. All the confusion, all the commotion, all that fire burning, that fire will be quenched in Jesus' name. It says thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. It will answer your prayer. I said it will answer your prayer. The prayers you pray from the depth of your heart because of your need is going to answer you today. And ye shall seek me and find me, where ye shall search for me with all your heart. What's the result of that when God answers the prayer in verse 14? And I will be found of you, says the Lord, and I will turn away, tell me, your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I cause you to be carried away captive. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah chapter 33. I'm reading here from verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 33. And we're reading from verse 7. And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return. And I will build them as at the first. I will build them as at the first. As they were in the Babylonian captivity and they were saying, oh, the good old days. The days of peace, the days of progress, the days of power, the days of prosperity, good old days. And now they could not sing. How shall we sing the song of Zion in the land of the strangers? The Lord said, those good old days will come back. It's time to remember, what's the best time in the past in your life? The most joyful time, the happiest time. Was it before you got married? But was it the day you got married? Was it the day you were saved? Was it the day you were sanctified? Was it the day God gave you a miracle? Well, try to recollect the best day, the most glorious day of your past. That day will come back again. And will build them as at the first. Verse 8, and I will cleanse them from all the iniquity whereby they have sinned against me, I will pardon all their iniquities. The burden of sin will roll away. The guilt of sin will roll away. And the condemnation will roll away. And if your name is not in the book of life, your name will get to the book of life. And it says, I'll pardon the iniquity whereby they have sinned, whereby they have transgressed against me. Look at verse 9. And it shall be to me a name of joy. You become a joyful child. And you will be a child that will cause joy in the heart of our Heavenly Father in Jesus' name. A praise and honor before all the nations of the earth which shall hear all the good that I will do unto them. 
I will hear all the good that God will do unto you. You will give your testimony. We will enjoy your testimony. The nations of the earth and other people shall hear all the good that I will do unto them. And they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto it. Amen for you. Amen for your family. Amen for the provision of God in your life. Look at verse 14. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. The days come, I will do what I said, what I pronounced for them. It will be done in our lives in Jesus' name. Is a promise of God that cannot fail. The unfailing promise of the word of the Lord. The unfailing promise of the word of the Lord. It will be done. And I will be a partaker. And I will be a partaker. Jeremiah chapter 46. I'm reading from verse 27. Jeremiah chapter 46. Reading from verse 27. But fear not thou, O my servant Jacob, and be not dismayed, O Israel, for behold, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and be a rest, and at ease, and none shall make him afraid. None shall make him afraid. What are we going to eat tomorrow? There's no fear. What are we going to wear tomorrow? There's no fear. How will I be able to pay the school fees of my children? There is no fear. How will I have everything fulfilled? There is no fear. How will I get away from the captivity of uh, the landlord? There is no fear. How will the past leave me alone so I can fly and get to a glorious future? There's no fear anymore. Look at verse 28. Fear thou not, O Jacob, my servant, says the Lord, for I am with thee. For I will make a full end of all the nations whither I have driven thee, but I will not make a full end of thee. I will not make a full end of thee, but correct thee in measure, yet I will not leave thee. I will not leave thee wholly unpunished. He was talking to them because of the evil they had done. And the Lord was saying, yes, I'll punish you. Seventy years, that's enough. All the past suffering, that's enough. A glorious time has now come. Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 11. Ezekiel chapter 11. And I'm reading here from verse 16, Ezekiel 11, verse 16. Therefore say, thus says the Lord God, although I've cast them off, far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Therefore say, thus says the Lord, I will even gather you from the people. I will gather you from the people. You will not die in captivity. You will not die in imprisonment. You will not die in your problem. He's calling you out. He will gather you and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered. And I will give you the land of Israel. And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof, and all the abominations thereof from this. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and I will give them an heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them and they shall be my people and I will be their 
God. I didn't get the amen. That's the promise the Lord gave them, but he has given us a greater promise. Look at this now in Hebrews chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 6. Hebrews chapter 8, we're looking at verse 6. We have a greater promise. Chapter 8 of Hebrews, reading from verse 6, but now I see obtained a more excellent ministry. By how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Everything that people of Judah got, you will get. And much more, and much more, because God is a faithful God. He has given the prophecy, it's an unchanging prophecy. And he has given the promise, it's an unfailing promise. Number three now, the undeniable performance, the undeniable performance of the word of the Lord. Undeniable, undeniable performance of the word of the Lord. I want you to come back to, um, to Ezra chapter 1, Ezra chapter 1, and it is uh, so definite, Ezra chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 1. Ezra chapter 1 verse 1, now in the first year of Cyrus king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout, throughout, throughout all his kingdom. And he put it also in writing, saying, and then he made the proclamation. But you know sometimes, as you read the word of God, when something is repeated over and over, he said it now, he said it again, almost exactly the same words, the repetition is to assure us that it will not fail that it must be fulfilled. Look at 2 Chronicles chapter 36. 2 Chronicles chapter 36. I'm reading from verse 22. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom. And he put it in writing, saying, exactly as we have read in Ezra, the repetition is to tell you that heaven and earth may pass away, the sea may roar, and the devil may rage, but this word of the Lord will be yes and amen in our lives. Verse 23, thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth has the Lord God of heaven given me, and he has charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem that he is in Judah, who is there among you of all his people. The Lord is God. Be with him. Let him go up. Who is there this morning, and you have been in captivity? The Lord your God be with you. The, the Messiah, the Savior, be with you. The Deliverer, the Redeemer, be with you this morning. Let him go up. Let her go up. Leave your chains behind and leave all the oppression behind. Go up. I'm going up. Go up. I am going up. I will go up. I am delivered, praise the Lord. I said, I am delivered, praise the Lord. I said, I am delivered, praise the Lord. Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 19. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that is your lie. Neither the son of man that is your repent. As he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, or shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received a commandment to bless. And he has blessed. He has blessed you. And I cannot reverse it. And Balaam cannot reverse it. False prophets cannot reverse it. Circumstances cannot reverse it. The economy of the country cannot reverse it. 
the educational policy will not reverse it and the job or no job cannot reverse it and the politicians cannot reverse it he has not beheld iniquity in jacob neither has he seen perverseness in israel the lord is god is with him and the shout of a king is among them god brought them out of egypt he has he has a seat one the strength of a unicorn surely somebody shall surely? surely surely there's no enchantment against jacob neither is there any divination against israel every charm against you will become nothing every divination incantation against you will fall to the ground no incantation no divination against israel according to this time it shall be said of jacob and of israel what as god wrought what as god wrought he will do it he will do it in your life it is done luke chapter 1 i'm reading from verse 45 luke chapter 1 we're reading from verse 45 luke chapter 1 verse 45 and blessed is she that believed are the sisters here this morning are the brothers here this morning believe it is done believe the yoke is broken blessed is she that believe for there shall be a performance in my life there shall be a performance in my family there shall be a performance in my place of work there shall be a performance in the work of my hand there shall be a performance this new year there shall be a performance for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the lord somebody shout amen, amen. romans romans chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 16 romans chapter 4 we're reading from verse 16 romans chapter 4 we're reading from verse 16 it says therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure the promise might be sure the promise of salvation is sure whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved today the promise of healing is sure by his tribes tell me tell me we are healed and the promise of prosperity is sure today because god shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by christ jesus to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed not to that only which is of the law but to that also which is of the face of abraham who is the father of us all as it is written i have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed even god who quickness the dead and call it those things which be not as though they were the things that be not in your life the lord is bringing them by creation today who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be and he was and be not weak in faith he's talking about you abraham and the seed of abraham and be not weak in faith he considered not is somebody now dead don't consider anything of touch anything you see anything you feel anything the doctor said anything you dreamt about he considered not is somebody now dead when he was about a hundred years of a hundred years neither yet the deadness of sarah's womb he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief he was strong in faith somebody there strong in faith my brother there strong in faith my sister there strong in faith my son my daughter there you are strong in faith giving glory to god and being fully persuaded anybody with persuasion here today fully persuaded fully persuaded being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able 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 
also to perform. Able also to perform. Today is the day of performance in your life. Say it, say it. Today is the day of performance in my life. May God confirm it from heaven in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. I'm reading from verse 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. Brothers and sisters, be of good cheer. Let those tears be wiped away. Be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be. It shall be. It shall be. Even as it was told me, it shall be. I didn't hear you. It shall be. Say it shall be. Even as it was told me. Everything you have had this morning will come to performance in your life. It's time, it's time to receive. Yokes are broken now. Sins are taken away. Guilt is taken away. And uh, the, the sicknesses are taken away. Yokes are broken. Today, a performance in your life. What are you? What are you? Stand up and receive. Today, a performance in your life. A performance in your life. A fulfillment in your life. The perfect fulfillment of the word of the Lord. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Look at the prophecy concerning Cyrus. His name had been mentioned before he was born. You are not an accident. God knows you. He knows your name. He knows you'll be here. He knows you'll be here on this day. He knows you'll be making this request and he preserved for you what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, what has not entered into the heart of man. But the problem is they didn't stir up themselves. Stir up yourself. Stir up yourself. Stir up yourself and say, I'm not going to remain the way I was. Captivity is gone. Yoke broken. Sickness gone. The power of sin is broken. There must be a performance in your life. You are the man. You are the woman. You are the boy. You are the girl. The Lord has been waiting for you. He mentioned your name. He wrote your name. He thought about you. He prepared for you. He planned for you. Like he planned for Cyrus. All those things that disturb you. All those things that try to bog you down, they're going to be taken away. Taken away. A time of performance in your life. A time of deliverance in your life. A time of release in your life. A time of restoration in your life. Cheer up, my brother. Cheer up, my sister. Cheer up, son and daughter. Cheer up because I believe God. Because I believe God. It shall be. It shall be. It shall be, even as it was told me, it may declare to you, it shall be. No promise of God will fall to the ground. No word of God will fall to the ground. No promise, no prophecy, no pronouncement, no proclamation of the word of God concerning your life will fall to the ground. Be fully persuaded today. Be fully persuaded today. Be fully persuaded today. Everything he has said will be done. Everything he has said will be done. It may look impossible. It may look incredible. It may look unbelievable. But today is a day of performance in your life. The word which he has said will not return to him void. It shall accomplish. It shall accomplish. It shall accomplish. Everything that he has said. The reason why the word of God was sent to you, it will be done. It will be done. It will be done. Not staggering because of unbelief, but strong in faith. Be strong in faith today. There's a performance in your life, a realization in your life. It will be done. If you have sinned and confess your sin to the Lord, there's assurance it will forgive you. It will save your soul. If you're sick, tell the Lord about the sickness. 
there's assurance he will heal you if there's any oppression if there's any yoke if there's any bondage if there's any captivity declare it to the lord that captivity will be taken away there's assurance today there's assurance today of the fulfillment of the word of god it will be done it will be done it will be done any need in your family tell the lord it will be done your profession tell the lord it will be done your prospects tell the lord it will be done your spiritual life tell the lord it will be done there's a performance today there's a performance today there's a performance today all is good will all is good work in your life must be done you're going back home with assurance the need is met hopelessness is gone helplessness is gone he'll fulfill his word he'll fulfill his word he will fulfill his word no doubting no wavering no unbelief is god is god is god will see whose word will stand the word of satan will not stand in your life the word of false prophets will not stand in your life the words of deceivers will not stand in your life the word of god will stand in your life the word of god will stand in your life the promise of god the prophecy of his word will stand in your life heaven and earth will pass away but his word will not pass away fulfilled 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 it's done it's done it's done you see a performance you see the miracle you see the turning around you see the going up you see the going up you see the going up and the lord will stop your spirit go get it go get it go get it go get it don't be laid back rise up get it now it is yours now it is yours the walls of demarcation are broken down the prison doors are opened the chains and the shackles are broken the release is here already and the blessing is already there confirmed in your life Praise him for that, praise him for that, praise him for that, praise him for that, praise him for that. Blessed is he, blessed is she that believed. For well, there shall be a performance of everything the Lord has spoken to you of today. I believe God, it shall be. I believe God, it shall be. Even as it was told me of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And the believing church of God said, Those who are delivered, those who are released, those who are set free, those who are ready to go up and possess, and they say, It is fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Where are you? Raise up that hand. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you because of the proclamation. We thank you because of the prophecy. We thank you because of the promise that you have given to everyone here in the service this morning. Let there be a performance in Jesus' name. Forgive all their sins. Save their soul. Sanctify those who are saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost, those who are sanctified in Jesus' name. 
and every good thing you have promised in your word. I pray there will be a performance now in every life in Jesus' name. No sickness anymore will be on the body of your children. And I command that sickness come out in Jesus' name. Every oppressing spirit, Lord, you release your paper right now. Break every yoke and destroy all the works of the devil in their lives in Jesus' name. Abundant provision for everyone. And supernatural power for everyone. And the performance of all the promises of God for everyone today in Jesus' name. Confirm your blessing. Confirm your promise. Confirm the provision. Confirm your promises and confirm the fulfillment in every life, even right now. And I pray, Lord, the joy of the Lord will be the strength of your people. As we're going back home, we're going back home with everything that you have done. No more tears, no more sorrow, no more heartache, no more regrets. But now there is joy, there's happiness, there's assurance. There is salvation, there is healing, there is deliverance, there is redemption. Confirm your good promise in every life, Lord. We well, thank you because we know it is done. We know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray.